Hello, um, welcome. I'm M. Lloyd. Um, I'm an artist and I like to make really bold, colourful and abstract illustrations. Um, throughout the stream, I'll, I shall promote sort of things that I do, but um, you'll get to see me draw some hopefully rather cool artworks. Um, so in this stream, I'll actually be working on sort of developing this piece that I worked on in the last stream which I call stratum. And uh, the idea is that it's sort of like the layers of the earth. So stratum is actually the word that they use to describe the different layers of um, like soil. So that's kind of what um, this is kind of inspired by. So yeah, in the last session, we basically had an image that looked a little bit like this. In fact, not exactly like that. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was no color, nothing. And so what we did throughout that uh, uh, session, we basically just added color by color and we found some really cool um, uh, color schemes and palettes. And I kind of like the way it's working uh, to the point where I kind of want to develop it more. So I've got all this negative space here, which is usually what I do with these kind of drawings. I've um, done these before, so there's one that I worked on a couple of weeks ago. That is this one here. It's actually for another streamer who I follow. He's a good mate of mine, uh, Spicy Orange Gaming. And yeah, similar kind of concept. These drawings are a lot of fun because there's so much drawing and um, there's so much work to it. Often takes a bit of time to really develop the, um, I suppose all the content to it because there's so many different layers and so much detail. But when you get it, it just works really well, in my opinion. Perhaps you think differently, but that's okay. Um, yeah, in the previous streams, I've done some other cool stuff. So if you're thinking of following, yeah, you can expect to see things like um, me developing products. So I do sell products. In fact, this, I, this one's a smartphone case, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> and um, yeah, basically, um, this was all designed in my very first stream. This is my fourth stream, by the way. So um, yeah, this is, you're tuning in pretty early, which is really cool. Um, I did this in the second stream. This is actually a, just a random abstract. I called that stream drawing without purpose. So I often do that. I often just start, put the pen down, no objective and just go. And I find sometimes some of my best work comes out that way. I, I kind of like this one. It was a bit of fun actually to make. Um, Drawing without purpose can be really relaxing, actually, because there's no sort of strict goal that you have to adhere to. Um, but throughout the week, I've been working on some other really crazy stuff. These were not on stream. This one's just me playing around with um, two-point perspective, um, just seeing if I can make something that was similar to another artist I saw on Instagram whose name I cannot remember, but um, really cool. And I'm trying to sort of copy his style a little bit. Uh, this one here is just me trying to draw without um, thick black lines because that's sort of become, it sort of became my iconic, it's sort of my style, essentially. I wouldn't say iconic because I'm not really big, but um, <laughs> it's sort of become my style over the years of using nice thick black lines and um, I wanted to experiment what my art would look like if I didn't do that. So this was basically uh, my attempt. Um, and last but not least, I sort of, worked on this piece. And this is actually a piece I started a while back and I don't think the color picks it up quite, or the camera doesn't pick up the colors quite right here. I'll see if I can adjust it. But um, maybe not. There we go. That's a little bit better. But um, yeah, it's a really cool abstract piece. It was sort of designed to be a sort of smartphone background. And um, <laughs> the reason I kind of finished it off is because I've recently started a TikTok channel and um, this was actually my first ever TikTok video. And um, 
yeah, uh, spoiler, it was terrible. It didn't go very well at all. Um, I think I've got a total of about 20 views and um, <laughs> I think one like at the moment. So I think I've got to learn how that TikTok algorithm works. Oddly enough though, I put it on Instagram as well and I managed to get like 3000 views, but um, not so many likes, still only about 15 or so likes. Um, but yeah, the big point of it was to sort of bring some people here and so they can actually see um, what you'll be seeing today or tonight or whatever time you're actually watching this, which is really cool. Because the truth is this isn't just streamed live. Uh, this content is also um, being streamed to YouTube. So if you can't make it throughout the full stream, uh, just keep in mind that through my website at uh, mloydartist.com, you can actually just, uh, find my YouTube channel by going to the live stream section. Uh, clicking that will take you to all the different locations that you can find my live content. So if you wanna watch me live on Twitch, you just simply tap the top on there. Uh, or if you go see previous streams on YouTube, you'll actually see the entire playlist that I've so far uh, begun. So it's only three, but um, yeah, you're welcome to check it out. And yeah, I've got a total of nine views. How cool is that? <laughs> Wow, it's probably me as well. <laughs> uh, I'll close that and let's hop into, let's get started, shall we? I'm kind of excited about this stream. I, I worked on this last stream and I really enjoyed it. Back then, I wasn't actually, back then, a week ago, I wasn't actually doing any um, actual sort of, say illustration, I wasn't really doing any outlines or anything like that. I was purely just coloring it in, but um, yeah, that was, in itself just a really fun task. I find putting colors in to be a little bit like a puzzle, trying to get the right combination can be really tricky. So you'll be hearing me guzzle down uh, gallons of water throughout the um, session. It's uh, pretty hot over here in Melbourne. Um, we just came out of a pretty cold winter, well, in my opinion, but um, yeah, the weather's starting to pick up. Um, which is more that can be said for the rest of the situation in Melbourne at the moment. So yeah, we, like many other countries, I suppose, are in a lockdown. And sadly, that kind of got extended. And so everyone's kind of just in their homes, keeping safe, hopefully. Um, and yeah, we... It's an interesting time, but... I think one of the greatest assets I have as an artist is to simply um, have a really amazing passion that I love doing. So even in times when I'm sort of locked down, I'm at the very least, I've got something to work on, something to keep me happy and that's awesome. Oh, we got someone in the chat. Um, Tom Tucker, uh, pleasure to meet you, my friend. I don't think I've heard, heard of your name in my chat before. So. Um, it will, be interesting to see, it will be interesting to see if we get a cold summer here again. Yeah, I think last year it was like that from memory. It, it was an interesting one, wasn't it? It was a pretty chilly kind of summer. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't mind cold weather, but um, maybe that speaks to this sort of introvert in me. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, let's give this a shot. So um, my plan was to kind of imitate the exact same pattern here but have it like in a sort of, if I go like that, there we go. So that's actually a little trick called quick shape. So if I go like that, and I think actually, you know what, I'll make this line a bit thicker. I want it to perfectly match that one. Let's have a look. Um, there we go. So I'd love to know, Tom, how did you find my stream? Cause um, I'm pretty new at this uh, Twitch thing. And um, I must admit, I am still kind of trying, I'm still kind of getting the hang of things, if I must be honest. <laughs> trying to figure out how to actually get more followers and get more viewers. Ah, um, so Tom says, smaller art streamers are typically swamped by the anime art streams. They need their own category. I found you through a ton of scrolling. Oh, dude, I'm glad you said that. It actually, um, no, it's actually really cool to hear that because the truth is that's actually one of the reasons I started doing it. I feel like there's a lot of anime stuff and, you know, there is a lot of technique and a lot of work that goes into making that stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like it's like, I, in all honesty, I probably couldn't do it. Um, but yeah, I thought 
I might sort of try doing something completely different just to see if there was any kind of, um, I don't know, market for it, I suppose. Because um, I, with the art, I always like, well, I, I suppose I tend to make art that I, that I would want to consume, <laughs> if that makes sense, that I would actually want to uh, watch. I'm still not satisfied by this line. Uh, this is probably the most painful thing about my streams is that I get a bit OCD. There we go. That's a bit, that's probably the nice thickness. And I liked that curve I heard earlier, but the line just wasn't doing it for me. There we go. Yeah, it's true. There are some good ones. Like, um, it's actually funny. Like, I thought I'd watch a lot of the um, ink artists and illustrators on Twitch, um, just like yourself. But um, I find myself getting really into 3D modeling stuff for some reason. There's a lot of that. Um, recently, I've been watching this guy called Flonzy, and I think he's based in Hobart. And um, yeah, just like, yeah, it's really fascinating because I don't know anything about 3D modeling. So seeing other people do it's just super cool. Okay, so let's see if I can. In fact, what I'll do just to make things easier on myself, I'm just going to isolate this layer here. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can kind of get the right size lines. I think that is probably a little bit thin. We'll go like that. Very cool. Mr. Mayo is awesome and happens to be Australian. Oh, dude, I'm actually looking for more Twitch um, art recommendations because, yeah, I, I find myself in the same boat. As much as I respect people who draw that sort of anime stuff, I do find myself um, kind of getting a bit bored of it. <laughs> so I think I'll, yeah, that's an interesting one. I'll, I'll remember that one, Mr. Mayo. And what type of art does he do? Like, is it, um, yeah, is it sort of like watercolor or is it, at least I should, I should ask, is it digital or is it maybe, um, I suppose, what do they call it? IRL art now <laughs> in real life. Yeah, I, I can never keep track of these terminologies now. Um, a friend of mine taught me into relearning to draw, so I bought a... Oh, you bought a graphic pen display. Oh, that's so cool. Um, I'd love to ask which brand you got, because I was considering getting one. The one disadvantage of buying an iPad for sketching, or any tablet, I find, is that you kind of... You're kind of leaning down a lot, if that makes sense. Um, Digital painting, I guess, his style is quite nice. Yeah, I've got to, I'll have to check out this Mr. Mayo dude. That sounds really cool. Um, Hui on Canvas Pro. Yeah, I've heard good things about that. And I must admit, a 16-inch screen does sound really appealing. I wouldn't mind that. That is really cool. Um, yeah, like, what, what program would you use? Would you use, like, um, Photoshop or Illustrator? What, what do you reckon? Any plans? Uh, let's have a look. I might actually make this a little bit smaller. So the thing I like about this particular style is that um, I don't, it doesn't actually have to be quite perfect, although I did really well last time in getting those kind of, I'm going to call them worms. <laughs> I got them pretty um, sort of consistent and I'm sort of struggling to do that at the moment. I need to get back into my my groove, so to speak. Ooh, that's not the eraser I like. Let's go to this one. Um, I might go to a more fine eraser there. There we go. Uh, $554 on Amazon with a 185 discount. Oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, certainly cheaper than an iPad, which is pretty cool. Um, and what else have you, what else have you mentioned? Um, most people recommend Photoshop. Yeah, like that. Photoshop's good, don't get me wrong, and there's certainly elements to that software that you just can't get anywhere else. Like, it, For example, I'm using Procreate at the moment, which annoyingly is only on iPad. I kind of wish there was like a Mac version or like a Windows version, that'd be so cool. But um, yeah, the great thing I've always loved about Photoshop is that there's certainly a lot more, um, I think there's more plugins and stuff, you know, like one thing that Photoshop has that I've always been really jealous of, it has this like textile designer. So the idea is that you can create these sort of seamless patterns. Like um, to give you an example, um, there's this thing called Painter. Um, yeah, the custom brushes in Photoshop, like they've got, because they're the oldest, I suppose, probably the oldest software, 
for sort of graphic design, you definitely have like a huge library of like third party brush makers as well. Although to be fair, like a lot of the other um, sort of software companies are sort of starting to catch up, I think. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, check this out. This is really cool. Um, so this is a thing I think you can do in Photoshop that you can't do in Procreate. You can do it in this app, but it's always really glitchy and it kind of breaks down all the time. But if Photoshop had this, I'd have <laughs> really no issues at all. But it's basically, this is the thing I'm jealous of because I know Photoshop people have access to this kind of thing. And it's really good if you're designing things like fabric. Um, I'd, ob I'd obviously put a bit more work into my stuff than this crazy thing. But um, yeah, it's super cool. And I like that's the kind of stuff that Photoshop has. You can sort of, I don't know, you can sort of build more onto it, I think. Um, last time I looked, anyway. Really cool, let's go like that. So I'm gonna try and copy this little worm thing. God, I'm not getting these worms quite right today. It's actually been a while since I've uh, sketched. I haven't had the opportunity to sketch for a good while. Um, I've been doing a lot of, um, yeah, that Infinite Painter app is really interesting. Um, I still prefer the brushes and the the actual just user interface of Procreate, but um, there's some really interesting stuff in Infinite Painter that often seems to have flown under the radar. No one seems to recognize that as a as a good app, but it is. It's actually kind of impressive in what it can do. Um, but yeah, like in the last week, I think I've just been kind of doing a lot of housework and. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. Like, um, I've had to remove a fence post, which um, I thought would be a really easy task. It was possibly the most <laughs> hard work I've done <laughs> in the entire year. It was really strange, like, because the thing was like huge, it was really thick, and it was um, dense wood. So I, I kind of spent the entire um, day just hacking away at this thing with an ax. Like a madman. Oh, fucking. <laughs> it's insane. My arm was so sore at the end of it. Um, and yeah, it was kind of interesting. Famous last words. <laughs> true. Um, indeed, that is true. Um, so do you stream on Twitch yourself, Tom? Or are you, um, you just sort of getting into art at the moment? There you go. I'll go like this. Cause I must be, I must be honest, um, although I'm streaming to a relatively low audience, there's something really fun about this. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm focused. Whereas usually when I'm sketching, I'm basically just um, sketching while watching the telly. And that's a bit of a, <laughs> yeah, that can get a bit addictive. <laughs> Maybe in future as I potato brain, I like that, <laughs> potato brain, as I potato brain my way through learning to draw. You know what? Um, Take it bit by bit, and um, my advice is never be afraid, and don't be ashamed to use undo, because you'll notice that I use it all the time. I think when you're doing digital drawing, always remember that you're kind of drawing on like a glass surface, so it's actually not unusual for your pen to, because it has no friction, it'll often slip. So don't be afraid to press that undo key, it's a great learning tool, as well as a, um, yeah, as well as a really handy thing in case you completely balls it up. Um, if you're interested, like if you have an iPad, um, or actually even if you have an iPhone, um, I have a Skillshare um, class where you can actually learn to do this thing called augmented reality sketches. And on my website, you can actually get access to it for free for a month. And so I sort of teach, yeah, it's a good hour long class and it sort of teaches you a lot of the tricks here. Um, and I say, if you have an iPhone, like uh, Procreate has like a Procreate pocket version. So if you are lucky enough to own one of any sort of Apple touchscreen device, you should be able to do it there as well. And so I sort of teach you like how to use layers and I teach you things like clipping masks, alpha lock. If I get time, maybe I can do that in this stream as well. I like the idea of this stream kind of being um, kind of for people who not only want some nice background stuff to listen to, because <laughs> that's how I listen to Twitch stuff, honestly. I tend to um, I tend to basically just um, have it running in the background when I'm sort of playing video games. And every now and then you just look over and there's some nice artwork being created. <laughs> it's a nice feeling. Um, 
but yeah i like the idea as well as well of sort of being a sort of educational resource so if you have any questions or maybe you're looking for um, advice or maybe you're just um i don't know maybe you're looking for inspiration yeah just let me let me know man like um and yeah hopefully i can sort of help you out i'm actually into power carving and wood turning oh god that sounds so cool I've always been jealous, actually, of people who have that skill. I must be honest, man. Um, that sounds really sick. Um, but my hands have screwed nerves, and I don't like the strain, so I need something less intense. You know what? Fair enough. Um, yeah, you're not... I think you're not the only person who takes up sketching for those kinds of reasons. Um, I had a, a friend of mine who had... who's developing a bit of arthritis, like, in his hand, and I think he's starting to take up sketching as well, so... Um, yeah, dude, it's, yeah, um, I'm sorry to hear that, but honestly, the, the having the skill of wood turning if, and power carving, if you can do that, I reckon you can do this. <laughs> so, um, I think you've got a future there. Uh, that, that takes a whole lot of intellectual capability. I don't think I have myself. Um, yeah, it is like, they are like such a important thing, you know, like recently I've been kind of concerned about, um, ergonomics. So, because I'm often sort of behind a screen um, for work. Um, even now, I'm sort of technically behind a screen. So I've tried to really get behind um, sort of making sure I'm like typing correctly and having my back posture and everything correct. Because you never think about this stuff when you're younger. But um, I don't know. I think as you grow older, it's, you start to get just that little bit wiser about protecting yourself and sort of not putting yourself through too much strain. So yeah, if you're interested in sketching, um, dude, like feel free to come on as much as you want and ask me just a ton load of questions because um, yeah, I, it's great to have people to chat with, I must say. Um, yeah, let's have a look. So I'm kind of liking that. It's all right. I don't think it's as consistent. This little line here, it's not as consistent as what I was doing here, but um, you know, it does a job. Um, I'm going to do this little thing that I have there. So I want to try and keep a level of um, sort of consistency in the design here. I don't want to change it up, but I do want to have slight variances. So like if some things are slightly smaller or somehow maybe more compact, that's okay. I think having those weird little warps and imperfections, it kind of adds to this a little bit. Okay, let's go like that. Yeah, but thanks for stopping by, Tom. Um, I really, it's nice to have someone who's not a bot in the uh, in the chat. <laughs> okay, I better take a drink. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, I managed to mess up the ulnar nerves in both my arms. Oh God. Um, what did you do out of curiosity? Um, oh, actually, you know what? You don't have to share that. That's fine. Um, I believe in privacy. <laughs> um, you'll grow eventually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go like this. If I go like that. Um, okay. A welder apprentice. Oh, God. Dude, welding, I, I remember when I was back a long time ago when I was in high school, we, um, we sort of did welding in like a sort of metalwork um, thing, and I was too chicken to do it. <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> It seems like such a dangerous thing, but um, yeah, it's such a, mind you though, it's a great skill to have if you want a job, you know, there's got to be, there's always got to be a job in welding, I think. Yeah, well, um, worst decision of my life. Um, yeah, well, you can't always get things right, dude. That's, that's the simple truth. You can't always make the right decisions. I've certainly made my poor decisions in life. Um, doing a music degree was my piss poor decision. <laughs> I should have done like a degree in law or something. But um, it was fun though, I must say. And I did meet some really cool people. Let's go like that. So I'm thinking I'll start with the circles first. Uh, one cool thing about Procreate, I'm not sure if you can do this in Photoshop. Hopefully you can. But you can, it seems to be populating across to different. Um, uh, drawing apps now but you can kind of just draw a circle and um, then as you hold down at the end it kind of snaps into a perfect circle which is kind of cool 
and I think different apps have different ways of doing it but um, that's a cool little trick hopefully Photoshop can do that so you can uh, exploit that one because I certainly do I will say that <laughs> okay I couldn't draw a straight circle to um, save my life like for fun let's do it <laughs> it's just a disaster it's never gonna happen yeah no I'm, I'm so used to procreate you know a funny a funny story I was um I had a just a biro and I was drawing on um some newspaper just a sort of rough sketch and um because I'm so used to drawing in photoshop <laughs> when I made a mistake the first thing I did was tap two fingers on the piece of paper and um <laughs> tried to undo my um my drawing it was embarrassing because people were watching like what are you doing you idiot I was like, I'm, I'm trying to undo <laughs> uh, you learn these like little gestures it's ridiculous got to draw from your sh oh my god you've seen those videos haven't you of um those people drawing perfect uh circles on like um chalkboards um that is a skill that i'm very impressed by um usually like math teachers and stuff <laughs> Um, did I actually invert that last time? No, I didn't. I'm putting this on the wrong side. Okay. I get quite methodical when I'm drawing. So let's do. Okay. Now let's add those lines. Awesome. Very cool. Um, yeah, if you haven't already, Tom, feel free to follow. Um, yeah, it's been nice chatting to you, and yeah, feel free to stay as long as you want. If you do need to head off, though, I was sort of mentioning at the very beginning, I actually do put all this stuff on YouTube as well. So you're actually, um, if you're looking for maybe educational resources and you can't catch my streams for whatever reason, uh, don't be afraid to check that out as well, because everything I do is sort of recorded there. Um, Got to draw from your shoulder for a perfect circle. Has something to do with the limited range of movement in your hand and wrist? No kidding. You know, it wouldn't surprise me, man. Like, um, the human body is certainly not as perfect as a, as a lot of religious people seem to think that it is. Um, <laughs> I'll be awake all right. I'm a night owl. Yes, yeah, so am I. Um, I've got to, in all honesty, I, I'm a night owl, but I don't want to be. I'm trying to sort of get more consistent sleep patterns happening. Especially now that um, Melbourne, where I reside, is currently in a bit of a lockdown. Because um, there's a truth that when you're in a lockdown, um, all the days kind of blend into each other. Um, it was funny, I, at work I completely missed one of my meetings because I thought it was um, actually Monday, but it was Tuesday. And I was like, oh God, it was just insane. Um, I've, got to, <laughs> I've got to get back on the ball and I think I'm hopefully by improving my sleep patterns I can kind of do that but um, yeah mind you a lot of people perhaps they're night hours simply because of work and things like that so really cool I'm over towards Warner Ball ah cool I loved Warner Ball when I last went there it was a long time ago um, yeah mind you though like there's a lot of benefits to being out in the um, out in rural areas, dude. Like, I must say, um, sometimes the city can kind of drive you nuts with just how busy it gets. Um, like recently, I've been looking at property, um, so I've saved up over the last decade to buy myself um, sort of like a small unit. And the price is God in Melbourne at the moment, just ridiculous. I don't know what it's like over there, but I imagine it's a little bit more affordable you'd hope it is but um yeah there are definitely benefits man to being in rural areas don't knock it too much yeah i found being awake at night helps me think clearer though um yeah you know fair enough um especially with noise like i i'm terrible when it comes to if there's like someone next door who's like um just mowing the lawn um, <laughs> i find my concentration just completely goes out the window um, so yeah, I think there is a benefit to doing things at night. A lot of people run at night and, um, I, I don't know. I think I, I don't, I wouldn't recommend it. I think it'd probably be a bit dangerous if there's some weird, creepy people around, but, um, at the same time, 
I reckon that'd be a really nice experience. I, I think I would prefer running at night time because of the temperature. I think it'd be much cooler. It's um, At the same time, I'd be worried about getting hit by a car or something. <laughs> okay. Awesome, let's pop that in. So those circles are looking all right. I think now it's time to do this weird... Um, oh God, what am I call that slime? <laughs> let's call it slime. Okay. Um, yeah, we get kookaburras, koalas, oh, yellowtail, black cockies, sulfur-crested cockies, galahs, rosellas, king parrot. Wow, you actually know the name of them all. White-faced herons and brog. <laughs> that's so cool. Um, kookaburras like to... Oh, yeah, of course they would. Yeah, that's a thing, isn't it? Yeah, um, I know... I kind of know the feeling. Um, it's not Nothing is exotic where I am, but um, there's a lot of magpies in my backyard at the moment who... For some reason, they actually get up much earlier than they should. <laughs> they just, um, they make those magpie sounds and um, yeah, it's certainly very distracting. Nothing like a kookaburra though, for sure. Yeah, I used to have like um, a house in the country. Uh, well, my parents had one. And um, yeah, you see all that wildlife and it's just such a, such a lovely thing to have though like you i think you take it for granted when you live near it but um if you do i encourage you to always remember how lucky you are um i'm a bit of a it's funny i'm not so much of a nature i wouldn't say i'm a nature lover but i do appreciate being around it um there are tons of native finches in melbourne when i used to live there oh right I used to live in werribee oh wow cool how long have you lived in sort of um, around Warrnambool, like in the rural areas. Um, oh, I might go like that. Have I got the right size there? Maybe not. Yeah, that seems okay. Okay, so if I go like that. And I think last time we had a variety, that, yeah, I had a variety of sort of tails. Um, five years. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, not bad. Um, really cool. Yeah, I'm sort of in the, the lower part of um, Melbourne. So in sort of what they call, they call it like the Bayside suburbs. And it's a nice area. But um, I must be honest, I feel like more and more it's becoming a bit upper class <laughs> and I don't really feel like I fit in um, I don't know what that says about me but um, I don't know maybe it's the artist in me I keep doing the same thing I've got to keep stopping I've got too much of consistency happening here um, let's go like this I think I've just got to be a bit more free with it don't I so I'll have three little tail things And I shall... Don't even get me started on Newport or Williamstown. You know, there's a sad truth. I don't think I've ever been to, like, Newport or Williamstown. Um, it's kind of funny. When I went to uni years ago, I was sort of all over Melbourne. But, um, yeah, I think now I've kind of stayed in sort of the one place for a fair bit. And I really should, I really should travel more around Melbourne. There's so many different suburbs and they're all completely unique um got family there still oh good um awesome okay um how's that looking it's all right it's not bad i think i think i did a better job on the last last time i was drawing it but i feel like i'm getting back into my rhythm yeah, it really has been a while since I've been uh, sketching, actually. I found myself um, <laughs> removing fence posts. Oh, and actually, here's the thing. I recently started um, a TikTok channel, and um, not to, to not much success, quite frankly. I'm, I don't understand their algorithm. I find it's a really weird app to use. Um, I kind of was, the, the attempt was to try and bring people from that over to here, but I think the market's wrong. You know, I think people just want to watch like really quick, um, easy consumption content. Whereas, um, 
on Twitch, you really want to have that, um, I suppose, yeah, you, they generally hang around for longer content. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'll, I won't give up on it. I'll continue doing Twitch. But yeah, it's kind of weird. I've been doing, I've been removing fence posts, doing video production, and yeah, I, everything other than the thing I actually enjoy, which is sketching. So <laughs> um, I really should get back into the habit of doing it more often. Yeah, most of these conf 10 platforms getting a bit iffy. You know, I kind of agree with you, man. Like, um, out of all the content platforms, I think I really enjoy Twitch the most. There's such a connection here, and I feel like there's something there's something about its simplicity that I really love. Like, as much as I kind of agreed with what you said earlier on, like, the art channel needs to be split up because there's so much content in there. It's, and it makes it really difficult for, I suppose, the smaller people like myself to kind of um, break into it. But, yeah, it's... Um, at the same time, I like its simplicity. I like the fact that the people with the most viewers get pushed up to the top and there's none of this sort of vague, ambiguous algorithm stuff. Um, yeah, so what do we got? Got family there still. Yeah, most of these content platforms are getting a bit iffy now. Um, YouTube of all of its demonetized. Yeah, that's interesting. Like that's an area that I haven't really delved into. Um, for me, YouTube is basically just a um, thing that I use to have like recorded versions of my content because with Twitch, they sort of delete all your videos after about 14 days, which is cool. That's fair enough. Um, and I, of course, they should really. Um, I imagine having that stuff on the server would probably cost a lot to maintain. But um, yeah, so I just use YouTube as a place to um, dump my previous um, streams. Um, and so, yeah, if you are interested, I should bring it up. This is my website, by the way, amyloidartist.com. And um, yeah, if you want to see where you can find the previous streams, you can go live stream at the bottom here. And there's like a little see previous streams. So you just tap, tap into that and you can see my total of three streams. <laughs> I've got to get better at um, naming my streams. Um, I feel like I'm not taking advantage of the algorithm or search engine optimization but uh at the same time i like to keep it pretty simple <laughs> you might be able to you might have told you might have been able to tell that one um let's hop on back here we go cool oh, i've gone i've gone white here we go um okay so i'm relatively happy with these blobs i just remembered there's a darker line on the left of these to sort of give an impression of um, form. Form? Probably not. That's not the right word. To give an impression of maybe depth. It's like a sort of like a drop shadow. Um, so I'm just going to quickly add that in. Having these different shape lines just adds a little bit more detail and it makes a bit of a difference. Um, I'm really curious to see what stuff you end up making, um, Tom. So I sort of set up a Discord and like, I haven't really done anything with it at the moment, but I sort of put a little section where you can kind of share your own work. So um, if you're interested, you're welcome to try it out. And I like the idea, like, I've got this ambitious plan that at the beginning of my streams, um, you'll actually be able to, I, I can actually share some of the stuff that my viewers do. Um, I remember there was this really cool art show I used to watch as a kid and they used to do that so at the beginning of the show they'd actually have um, sort of uh, submissions from the viewers so you're welcome to actually yeah once you get started with your new uh, tab pen tablet thing I've already forgotten the name of it <laughs> they call it uh, pen display uh, there we go um, yeah when you get started with that I'd love to see what you end up making yeah feel free to show me um, one of the best things with my music degree um, back a long time ago was when everyone would be working on a project and like we'd sort of come together at the end of the week and we'd all sort of submit the same thing but every single time it was completely different but it was just a fascinating thing um, I'm curious myself I've not drawn anything in like 15 years before a random thing the other day which kind of made me think wait I was good at this one yeah dude it's kind of funny, like my, I only really started drawing properly about five years ago. That's the honest truth. Um, 
And there's a truth that I did most of the drawing on my smartphone. So I didn't have, didn't even have an iPad at this point. Um, and yeah, the idea was, I was just bored on the train. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I wasn't really into just watching like YouTube or, and I've, I've never really been big into social media. Um, so for me, like drawing was just a way to occupy like the 30 minute train journey that I take um, to and from work. And um, my, my goal every train ride would be to sort of do a quick little drawing, um, almost no bigger than something like this, you know, and try and do that in like a 30 minute uh, train ride. And, um, you know, if you do that every day for just like 20, 30 minutes, um, you do end up getting better. That's, that's cliche, I know, but practice does make perfect. Wow, there we go. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see what you do, man. So um, yeah, feel free to submit it one day. Um, I love seeing people's different styles. Like um, I say I'm not into social media, but um, I use Instagram pretty heavily and uh, not always by choice. I, I think I'm becoming quite addicted to it. <laughs> uh, but my Instagram, I'm quite proud of it. I've made the algorithm just show me nonstop artworks. <laughs> artworks and memes. Oh, and cat videos. And that, that's... That's a sad reality of my life now. I just see too many cat videos. <laughs> um, yeah, everyone seems to swear by the daily sketches or to fill sketchbook after sketchbook. Um, it's kind of funny. Like, I don't think you have to sketch every day to be good. But um, I'd sort of, I'd only do that if you're, if you've got some kind of routine happening. Like for me, it was just, I was on the train and um, I had nothing better to do. Um, I did. I wasn't something that I was like really committed to and like really diligent doing, but um, there are worse things to see on the internet than cat vids. To be fair, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I take your point. Um, I think, yeah. I I suppose my advice, man, is um, if you're looking to get back into it, um, if you can do a daily sketch, that's cool. But don't don't sort of overwhelm yourself. As soon as you get bored, stop. Um, because that takes the passion away and when the passion disappears and when the motivation disappears when the enthusiasm disappears then the development also disappears so um, don't push yourself to the point where you don't enjoy it and that's that's probably the best advice I can give anyone when it comes to sketching because even now like one of the, it's kind of been frustrating uh, starting twitch um, and like because you often uh, sort of talking to like zero viewers <laughs> but because I just genuinely love what I do I, I just love sketching um, it hasn't been that bad I've actually um, as frustrating as all of this sort of twitch thing is um, with like the slow growth at the start I'm actually genuinely enjoying it even when there's no one in the chat I just love sketching and being like doing this kind of thing uh, it's a great way to keep your mind kind of um, centered as well a lot of people do sketching because it's a rather mindful activity and I can't deny that it does there's something about sketching which just keeps your mind focused on one thing and helps you stay separated from everything else uh, boredom shouldn't be an issue because I've got access to MC for the nerve pain oh <laughs> wow there you go <laughs> um, very cool um, <laughs> Very neat. Um, very cool. I'm going, I just realized I've added a line there that I am going to remove. There you go. Very cool. Um, okay. Now with these blocks, they're pretty nonsense, nonsensical shapes. They're pretty sort of, they're blocky. <laughs> what for a better description. So I don't want to keep it too boring. I want to try and keep it a little bit unique. Oh, that's a feature called um, polyline, by the way, similar to that um, circle trick I was showing you. You can kind of snap these shapes into sort of like um, warpable, bendable, <laughs> malleable kind of shapes, really. Um, and yeah, it's kind of cool. So if you feel like you've gone a little bit too far with 
um, abstracting the shape a bit, you can kind of make it a bit more normal like I just did then. Now I'm going to have to ensure that I leave a bit of room for the 3D sides. Um, let's see if I can do that. If I go maybe downwards like that. Oh, I think Photoshop. Yeah, I, it wouldn't surprise me because like, I feel like, I don't know how true this is, so don't quote me on it, but um, I remember the first time I ever saw that uh, quick line feature was in Procreate, but it feels like everyone's introducing it now. Like there's a truth that you can even just use um, that circle feature in just the standard notes app in an, iP in an iPad. So even the big companies are actually starting to incorporate it. Um, fun fact, uh, Procreate is actually an Australian uh, company, um, which I found out not too long ago. But um, yeah, it's cool that some of these really cool innovations that I suspect they've come up with are actually really influencing the rest of the world. It's kind of cool. It's one of the only things I'm quite patriotic about now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it is surprising. Like. Um, Usually when you see these great apps, you kind of think California um, or I don't know, yeah, places in America, sometimes China, UK even, they're starting to develop a good sort of software um, industry. But yeah, no, like, um, yeah, Procreate's one we can claim. That's, that's ours. <laughs> and uh, it's just been hugely uh, successful. Um, there we go. I think I'm liking where this is going. I'm wondering if I had them all in the same direction previously. I kind of did. I had them going upwards last time, but I think, yeah, this will do. That's fine. I'm probably going to be the only person who notices these um, peculiarities. There we go. Awesome, cool. There's something also kind of relaxing about this particular art style I've got going here. <laughs> Cause like you sort of, you don't have to be too creative. <laughs> you can kind of, you only have to be a little bit creative and then you just keep looping it. You just loop it and loop it and loop it. And um, it's kind of fun. Um, but, and so as a result, you tend to kind of zone out with this style it's a bit of fun oh, i better take a drink i'm running out of water um i'll have to go to a small intermission sequence in a few moments um yeah the full page pattern things are awesome oh thank you so much that's really kind um yeah i did one for a friend actually because um this is the guy who got me into streaming um, spicy orange gaming he's got a pretty cool gaming challenge cha challenge uh, channel if you're interested in that kind of thing um, but yeah he's I sort of made this for him and I'm thinking he's gonna use it as like a sort of like a BRB screen so he'll have like a, a be right back kind of thing for when he goes off stream um, that's his logo <laughs> which um, I sort of made for him um, and he seems to like it which is good um, but yeah, like I've done a few of these, they're just so much fun to make. This is one that I was playing around with. Um, and I was actually playing around. Oh, we got Dr. O in the chat. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you again, Dr. O. Really cool. Um, yeah, I've been having a nice chat with Tom here, who's uh, about to take up illustration, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, actually, Tom, this is a good trick for you, man. Um, I'm, I know that Photoshop does have this. So if you go to, like once you've finished a drawing, you can actually go to this gradient map feature and it allows you to really quickly change the color palette to all of your drawings. Uh, so it's kind of cool. You can really customize these things as well, but it allows you to get some really funky patterns and styles. And um, yeah, it's sort of, it's a great way of sort of extracting more from a single artwork. But um, what I'll do, I'll just quickly go back like that. I kind of like that previous one. That's actually my current desktop background for my computer. <laughs> um, I really need to polish that one up though. Um, you should check out Kim Jong Ji P 
Peter Han, Carl Kopinski, Dong Ho Kim, and Dark Sith. The last guy is a really good um, light. Oh, cool. I like these recommendations, Tom. Thank you. Um, I really need some... I really need some more recommendations because um, I think there's a point where my Instagram, the uh, the cat videos are starting to overwhelm the art content, <laughs> uh, which I know Dr. O would be totally fine with because I know he's a bit of a cat lover. But um, <laughs> yeah, truth is, um, I kind of want to get over this uh, cat video addiction. <laughs> yeah, cat videos are cool. I, don't get me wrong, dude. I, I'm a big fan of him. But I think everything in moderation, you know, <laughs> I think it's starting, my addiction is starting to get the better of me, I will say. <laughs> um, I've actually found a lot of exotic animals are actually starting to um, appear on my stream, which is, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Because often you think, how on earth do people get access to these creatures in their home? But yeah, whatever, um, <laughs> each to their own. Um, okay, let's do that again. Just might polish up this little cubic thing a little bit. There we go. Kim Chung G, not Kin. Oh, dude, I'm really interested. You know what? You got me curious. Uh, I'll bring up my DuckDuckGo, uh, the most private web browser. Let's have a look. Um, last guy is really... You know what? I'll check out that last one. Darks, dark sit. Hmm. Oh, Dark is it. There we go. Oh, I think my Apple Pencil's running out of battery. Um, may, oh, doesn't matter, I can always do that in the... Um, oh, no, that doesn't seem right. Um, artists. Oh, stippling artists. Oh, yeah, they're cool. I was actually thinking of getting a um, stippling uh, brush, in a sense. I might just go like this. I hope this doesn't give me copyright or any issues or anything, but um, hmm. I might have to check them out off stream. But uh, now that I think about it, just so I don't accidentally breach some, um, he does some uh, naughty stuff. You know what? Maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll stop improvising <laughs> just so I don't get um, uh, in trouble or I don't get any sort of weird bans from Twitch because I'm still very new at this, so I shouldn't I shouldn't play it too risky. But yeah, I'll definitely check them out. Like um, I'm kind of. I'm very interested. I've, I'm fairly certain I've heard of Karl Kapinski. I, I can't... I, the name sounds really familiar. Absolutely. Legal in some parts of the US, um, if you mean monkeys, etc. Yeah, that's, that's weird. I've always found it strange that the US have all these kind of exotic animals, but um, now, now that I think about it, I don't know if in Australia we have that as well. Maybe we don't. Um, hmm. Curious. Okay, I've got to get this shape down. It's annoying me now. I've got to, I might have to do a much simpler um, little block here. Uh, let's go like that. Keep it like so. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, um, <laughs> I might try and avoid the pornography on the channel. It wasn't. <laughs> I'll keep it strictly to the art. But um, yeah, I, I do love the idea though of um, like my users sharing their art. That's a pretty cool idea. Um, so yeah, um, dude, I'm excited for you to take up sketching and I'm ex definitely excited to see what you can make. So don't be afraid to uh, put that in the Discord thing when, when you start making some cool stuff. And um, if you want, I can even share it on stream and give you a little reference to your Instagram um, if that's something you're into, whatever social media thing you use. Um, oh, cool. Um, Dr. Rowe is uh, shocked by the uh, pure mention of pornography on my um, on my very wholesome streaming channel. And you know, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I shall cut it out, Dr. Rowe. I, I promise. Um, I shall not uh, wander off the path of becoming um, Twitch famous in a wholesome manner. Okay. There we go. Um, these blocks are starting to come together. I've taken a lot longer to do these simple shapes than I perhaps should have. But um, I don't know. It's been a good conversation. I've enjoyed it. 
Okay, so what have I actually done in the middle of these? I've got these, I've got a sort of curvy line that's divided, dividing a stripe and a dot pattern. And the dots are, that's right, they're different sizes. So I'm trying to create a bit of variety with those dots. Um, I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to start with those curvy lines first. And I want to double check actually, are the curvy lines thicker than the... They seem to be a variety of thicknesses actually. So that's good, that doesn't matter. Um, I shall go like that. Cool. We'll have to see how I go first. You know, dude, I have faith. If you have a history in wood carving, then I think you can take up sketching. Um, just the more you practice, the better you get. Um, I My biggest recommendation is when you're um, learning like software for like maybe PC or Mac, uh, try and learn the keyboard shortcuts um, before anything else, I reckon. That's one thing that a lot of people don't do when they're learning new software. Um, and if you if it's like a tablet, uh, I say tablet. If it's a gesture-based system, I try and learn the gestures first. When I was in uni, I had this lecturer, and he said, um, "No one's you're never an expert until you know your keyboard shortcuts." <laughs> um, something along those lines, and um, it's definitely true. Like when you see people who know their keyboard shortcuts, they sort of like they sort of Jedi around the entire keyboard and they just do amazing things. And it's, you go, well, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And it's just amazing, they just know. And it just becomes like muscle memory after a while. Uh, the pen display has a bunch. Yeah, that's true actually, they do, don't they? I've always wanted to use one. But yeah, a lot of those pen displays, they have like a series of buttons and you can, sometimes you can customize them. You can make them like undo, copy, paste, that kind of thing. Which I must admit, I've been somewhat jealous of. Um, Oh, I'm running out of water here. There we go. I might have to do a quick refill. But um, it's, it's actually funny. I invested about $70 into this really um, pointless purchase. It was actually like a, a sort of small uh, keyboard thing, like a wireless keyboard that specifically worked with Procreate. And um, yeah, biggest waste of money. I haven't used it. But the whole point was so I could actually just use like copy and paste functions and um, yeah, I suppose like you could do things like quickly switch from eraser to smudge tool. And then, um, yeah, Dr. O, you'll love this. Uh, Spinzy came on in, I think it was two streams ago, yeah. And he showed me this feature, which is really cool. Um, and this like completely blows my mind because um, if you know me, I'm like always stuck in this app. I'm using this app religiously, but there's this thing you can do where you can actually um, quickly switch to an eraser or a smudge tool by sort of tapping this button here. So by holding that down, that switches it to, um, I believe, oh, that's right, if I hold it down and then I use my finger, that'll actually switch it to like an eraser. So for years I've actually been going, and I'm still doing it, you've noticed I've been doing it the entire stream, but I've sort of been going like this, and the whole time I could have just had my finger over here, and just quickly erase stuff, um, like so. But no, oh, it doesn't seem to automatically switch. Hmm, okay, I might look more into that. But yeah, interesting. Cycle through brushes and stuff too, yeah, that is handy. That is really cool. Yeah, Sam, uh, Sam? No, Spinzy knows everything. It's really frustrating. Um, and he drives me up the wall with how much he knows. <laughs> um, very cool. Um, okay, let's add more of those lines. I'm sort of cautious to try and polish up a few of these previous lines I've made, but usually I do the polishing actually after I've finished, because it's not the most entertaining thing. Um, some people call it polishing, some people call it touching up, but it's just where when you see something like this, for example, you just sort of um, try and correct it a little bit. Um, yeah, classic Spinzy. Um, he knows everything. Um, yeah, if you've ever, if you ever hear any uh, really early on in the stream, like before I start, um, there's some really amazing music that uh, plays in the lobby. And that's actually made by Spinzy. He's got this great Instagram page called A Quiet Haunt. And it's just this amazing ethereal um, 
music and it's all done with um, sort of guitars and um, effects pedals. He's such a talented dude. Uh, blows my mind. Uh, such a cool bloke. And um, yeah, he allowed me to sort of um, use, his, use his music uh, all for free, which I must say is quite a blessing. Um, very cool. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I it's weird. I've actually done a degree in musical composition, but um, I couldn't make that music myself. Um, I did not know that. That's so cool. Yeah, he's a very talented dude. Um, if I ever get the opportunity to show you, um, I will. So, yeah, but yeah, if you could, you can actually follow him. Um, I'm not sure how I can do this because I'm so new at Twitch. But his channel is on Instagram is, let's see if I can type it out, quite point. So yeah, that's his uh, Instagram thing. So it's really cool. Um, it's fascinating. And um, I really should shout him out more often for making it. Um, yeah, my music's a lot different. So I tend to make sort of weird electronic stuff. I recently bought this cool synthesizer called um, Pigments 3. And um, I've been playing around with that for a bit, which is kind of cool. And actually, um, that kind of leads into um, an intermission because um, I recently um, made a new intermission video. And um, funnily enough, it's actually uh, the intermission video includes this artwork. Um, and the, it's actually, the music behind that is actually made by myself. They're just sort of small little snippets I made. And... Um, what else is there I was going to mention? Yeah, there's a lot of other little things like um, during the intermission, you'll see little advertisements for Skillshare and stuff like that. So if you're looking to learn a little bit about uh, digital illustration, um, yeah, don't be afraid to check that as well. It's also a good excuse for me to charge my pencil and quickly get a drink. <laughs> so I shall be back, uh, gents, uh, very shortly, probably about five minutes at the most. Um, yeah, thank you for hanging around. If yeah, I shall be back relatively quickly. Cheerio.
Awesome, back. Um, thank you for waiting there. Um, yeah, it's actually fascinating how much water you end up consuming uh, during one of these streams. <laughs> and uh, there's a truth that uh, my Apple Pencil from yonk, yonks ago just doesn't quite last the distance. Um, so it needs to be charged every now and then. But the good news is that it kind of correlates and sort of um, synchronizes with my uh, my natural needs as a human. So that's uh, <laughs> that's one thing at least. Um, oh, uh, Dr. O is rocking out to my beats. What do you reckon? Um, yeah, I kind of I enjoyed making them actually. It was I, this is just me nerding out for a bit, but um, I. Yeah, the synthesizer I've got is called Pigments 3, and it's got this thing called like a, a, what do they call it? A granular synthesis engine. So it takes like samples, like audio samples, dices them up into really small grains, and creates these really nice elongated sounds. It's just so cool. I could nerd out about it for ages, but um, I'm probably speaking <laughs> at a level that no one actually cares about either, because it's it's pretty it's pretty. I don't know, techy tech music kind of stuff um, at that point. But yeah, like um, I've had a lot of fun making that music, and I'm sort of getting back into it actually. I'm curious on your thoughts of NFTs. Would you combine your art with your music or animation to create a product? Oh, dude, I'm I'm curious about it too. Um, it's kind of funny because there is a truth, man, that. I'm, I was actually really excited by NFTs when they were coming out, but you just hear about, oh, this is actually going a little bit off axis, so let me correct that there. You hear about the environmental impact of these things uh, and just a cryptocurrency in general. And I know it's probably the future and everything, but I don't know, like um, I'm willing to stoop to lots of levels to promote myself and make money like for example, I'll happily promote my um, products on stream to the point of um, probably frustration. But um, yeah, like for for the viewers, by the way, not my frustration. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I'm not sure if I could feel comfortable um, with NFTs purely because of the environmental impact. Um, it, yeah, my parents sort of raised me to be very environmentally conscious and. Um, yeah, it's probably to my detriment actually, because those NFTs they do make a bit. Because the idea is that when you sell one, um, let's say that person now has the NFT, they can then sell it to somebody else, um, so they get a profit. But then you also get a tiny incremental profit on top of it. Um, so it is interesting, and um, yeah, there's some really weird NFTs out there as well, which seem to, as you say, they do go for like crazy prices. Um, so I don't know, I'm not totally against it, but it would have to be some kind of environmentally friendly cryptocurrency. And um, I'm not sure if they exist. That, that's my only concern. Um, that's kind of where I stand on the whole thing. Um, there we go. Um, I'm actually really pleased to see, Dr. O, that you're actually a moderator. So <laughs> um, I was actually really confused of how I actually made someone a moderator. But, um, it seems I've done so successfully. So. Um, yeah, um, thank you as well for agreeing to be a moderator because um, yeah, I need. I'm I'm always cautious about having these like weird bots and spammers in my chat. Although it's never happened yet, I don't think I'm big enough. But um, yeah, like it's good to have that backup. It worked. It did work. Um, don't ask me how I did it. It was in some sort of setting somewhere, and <laughs> um, I've been looking at too many settings recently. Um, I was saying to uh, Tom earlier, actually, that I've started a TikTok channel. And so it was probably a bad idea, actually, because I've been trying to get my head around Twitch for the last couple of, um, I suppose, months even. But um, yeah, like TikTok's a whole other beast, actually. And um, I'm finding myself getting quite lost in everything there. So um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I exist to you as a text on screen, but how could you possibly know I'm not? A <laughs> um, it's a good question. Um, <laughs> I just I just can't imagine a bot living near Warnable in the rural area. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Would a bot have um, any 
awareness or any context of kookaburras um <laughs> would they care about kookaburras out um <laughs> i don't know um good good point though i can ban the bot if you like <laughs> oh no i don't that's my only um <laughs> my only genuine viewer um well of course other than yourself um uh mr mr o dr o even i shouldn't um ignore your um academic prestige um fair point two way <laughs> um i'm not genuine oh okay <laughs> fair enough well um i don't know how to respond to that there you go <laughs> uh, oh god i'm running out of water I'm, um, you should be happy to know that I'm keeping up my um, diligence in my water tracking application. It has really served no real benefit to me whatsoever, and I don't feel my health improving at all. But um, I'm doing it as a matter of discipline at this point. I'm just trying to see how long I can persist. Um, digging himself a hole here. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, <laughs> there we go. I don't actually understand what bots actually do on Twitch. Are they just trying to sell stuff or are they, um, I don't know, like I, I'm a bit confused of their actual purpose. Um, I'm, I'm sure they don't really understand their purpose either because they're not actually sentient. Well, as far as we know, maybe there is actually a special place out there where people pretend to be bots. Um, <laughs> This just goes to show how naive I am when it comes to uh, um, Twitch. Um, most are viewer bots. Mm. Have you ever thought that the taste of water is just its temperature? Oh God! Wow, this is um, this is getting deep. Um, viewer bots. Is that just like bots to increase like your viewer count? Is that a thing? Um, because yeah, I feel like I get a few bots on my channel and um, like the viewer count doesn't seem to be affected, which is, I don't know, I, sometimes I get annoyed by it, but it's I think it's probably better to have genuine people rather than bots. Um, there are some going around now named Variations of, oh, Hoss, yeah, he's, I've actually had him follow me. Uh, if I assume it's a him, it could be a her. Um, <laughs> I wonder if bots give a shit about their um their pronouns. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd like to think that they do. That if you call it a he and it's actually a um, she, her, they might get offended. Um, yeah, it's weird. Like I heard that they um, steal your um, your IP address and stuff. And um, yeah, I hope that's not the case. I really do. It's um it may very well be. I'm really struggling with this simple line and it's, it's really annoying me. Um, it's, it's all this uh, thinking about bots and um, Dr. O's very um, poignant question, that, that very deep question of um, uh, that the taste of water is just its temperature. Like, um, now that's got me thinking, man. It's got me really thinking um, as I drink. Mm. Such delicious temperature. Um, I clicked on one before I knew what it was, so I'll see what happens. Yeah, dude, I did the same thing. I think I think I'm fine. Although I've become um, prone to so many scamming emails in the last year or so that I probably wouldn't be able to tell if it's sourced from there or not. Um, I've been getting this other spam. It's actually just not really Twitch related. It's um, just common to Australia at the moment where you get these messages about um, sort of, oh, you've got a package that you haven't claimed or you've made a, a thousand dollar order from Amazon and you, if this wasn't your purchase, call now to um, cancel it and so forth. Um, luckily, I'm pretty aware of that stuff, but it's really picked up, I think, in Australia over the past year with COVID and everyone being stuck at home. So... Um, I think if you do have your more elderly um, or even maybe your more intellectually vulnerable friends and family, because um, I've certainly been trying to support them 
in my, my grandparents are very prone to that kind of stuff. They haven't actually ever been scammed as yet, yet. but I'm very, I'm actually concerned of it happening. So I've sort of got them on alert and if they, I'm sort of on call <laughs> if they actually get those suspicious things. So I've sort of become a bit of a tech support channel for them. And I think, because apparently it's like $150 million are actually lost to uh, spam calls. And no, sorry, not, not spam calls, uh, phishing attempts um, in Australia. So that's a thing. And um, yeah, it's something that doesn't seem to have really any clear solution. Um, yeah, the texts and phone calls. Oh, so it's not just me. It's good to know that other people um, are getting it as well. Some of the spam emails are fun to read. <laughs> that is true. I do enjoy reading some of the the spam emails, especially when it's some like Nigerian prince. Um, that's always fun. And you'd think they'd get over that story because <laughs> that story's been around for like um, decades now. I'm a Nigerian prince and <laughs> um, I've got $150 million and um, I need to secure it somehow. Can you help me do this? I'll just send it your way and then you can... Yeah, it's weird. Like, they're still going around. And I swear, it's been like a decade or something since these things started. I, I've got, I remember getting them like a decade ago. Claimed to be from the UN, though. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I reckon there's one for every country. It is. It's so 2002, I reckon. I reckon it probably goes back that far, man. It's so... It's such an old thing. And it's been around for ages. But people must really fall for it. It must be a really common one. Um, here we go. Oop. I can't believe how long it's taken me to draw this zigzag. Um, it's always thinking about um, spammers. Yeah, that's the thing. That's that's the only good thing spam actually is. It's um, it's good for a laugh if as long as you know what you're doing and as long as you're not susceptible to it. But just keep an eye on those um, more vulnerable people. Um. Yeah, what was I going to say? There's this, there's this really cool uh, playthrough of a video game. I wish I knew the name of it. But um, <laughs> it was actually the funniest game I've ever seen. It was, um, you know those like weird anime games? And they're like sort of dating simulators. It was like that. But the whole concept of this dating simulation game was that... <laughs> this like anime girl was um interacting with a, a nigerian <laughs> scammer <laughs> oh man I'll, if i ever find the video maybe i'll link it in the discord or something um but it just made me laugh so much um so the <laughs> the um the video is of this like anime girl who's um getting emails from this nigerian <laughs> scamming uh email and she actually takes it seriously and she gets she starts to develop her emotion a sort of um emotional relationship with this um, Nigerian spammer I straight up yell at the vulnerable people around me before they have a chance to fall for it <laughs> just scream at them just scream at them with uh, all your might and all your anger and hopefully um, yeah hopefully they'll uh, they won't fall for those tricks it's a good strategy it might give them a bit of anxiety but you know they're already going to get anxiety <laughs> there you go it's proven to work man <laughs> <laughs> okay now this is the more complicated part I've sort of forgotten what I did at this layer here it's sort of a wider square square not it's not not even close to a square it's a wider sort of polygon shape um, it's got a curve in there and that's right every second one has a line that's right so it has a double line so um, <laughs> I feel like Tom's going to start a sort of weird um, dictatorship uh, where <laughs> he's going to rule by Thea. Um, <laughs> and all the best to you, man. Uh, if you can solve the world's problems through Thea, then maybe it's no small thing. Um, okay, right. So how did I do this? I That polygon matches the zigzag. Okay, cool. So if I go like this... And then I go like that. I actually wasn't expecting to get this deep into the pattern. I was expecting this to take up too much space for some reason, but no, no it's kind of good. I like the fact that it's, um, I've got enough space to build here. It's pretty cool. Um, there we go. Okay. 
I'm getting sick of this white overlay. I'm going to switch back to my rainbow one. Um, there we go. I need to create more colored overlays. Um, I think it, oh no, it spices things up a bit. Um, I must admit, when I started, before I started streaming, I went really wild with my overlays and I sort of got a bit too carried away with it. But um, yeah, I need to create some more colors there. It's kind of cool. Um, Natural suspicion of someone asking for username or passwords over the phone is a good thing, especially the fear of being judged or falling for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree. And it's really frustrating because I feel like the people who who fall for it, either they don't really, um, maybe they don't speak English very well. So like if they've been told, if they've been told this, they might not have fully understood. But also there are some really convincing ones out there. And yeah, I can I can really understand why people fall for it, but um, yeah, I think we need to sort of build just a little bit of fear to sort of um, protect people. Anxiety is in the human DNA for a reason, um, and sometimes we have too much of it. But um, some people don't have enough, and. It can be important to remember that it's there as a survival mechanism. Okay, let's go like that. Okay. Mm, yeah, the elderly and people with um, intellectual um, disabilities, sadly. Um, okay, I might curve this shape around like that. Um, there we go. Actually, I should show you this because uh, I think I don't think I showed uh, Doctor Way this one, but um, since he came on, but yeah, there is actually color to this sketch. <laughs> um, when I add outlines, I tend to um, I tend to switch off color so I can focus on just the actual outline itself. It's a weird thing, and it's totally unnecessary. So, uh, if you're going to learn anything from this, Tom, don't don't learn that one. But um, yeah, um, I've received 100 messages over Restream Chat. Um, okay, I didn't know uh, Restream Chat actually counted my messages and celebrated that. Um, that's really cool. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Dr. O. That's really, I'm, I'm glad you like it. It's actually generated. Um, another cool trick here, Tom. Um, it's, if you're looking for cool color palettes and color schemes, there's this great app. It's actually free, and it's not even an app. It's also just a web page as well. But it's, um, it's really cool. You can just generate these really sick color schemes. And um, what's great about it is that you can then export them into, like if you use Procreate, you've got Procreate um, palettes. But there's even, um, I, think Pro, I think Photoshop uses SVG or ACE. I can't quite remember. It might be this one. But um, yeah, you can then just copy those uh, color palettes and you can have more than just five colors here as well. You can even see if I can remember how to do it. Oh, that's right, you tap and then you go add colors. So I could go five colors, there we go. And you can get some really funky stuff here. And if you're disciplined enough to stick to it, um, it can make your sketches just look super sick. So um, there's a free tip. Um, and I think it's actually just made by one guy which is funny. All, all, all the best apps are made by like one guy. It's so cool. Um, Telstra claimed not too long ago to be rolling out something to screen the spam calls. They're more frequent now, go figure. <laughs> yeah, um, poor Telstra. Uh, definitely. <laughs> I feel like their future is a tech company uh, continually. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not really uh, confident in it. Let's say that. But um, all the best to them. Maybe if they sort of start charging less for their plans, they might get far. Um, ah, there we go. I needed that. That was a good drink. Um, okay. Cool. Let's add one more sort of blocky kind of thing. Um, using really good terminology there. Um, cool. No, that's way off. What am I doing? In fact, I might do this. Ooh. I impressed myself then. 
Um, yeah, they tried to block a Singaporean company from moving in and giving us better internet infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, it's kind of depressing, isn't it? Sometimes when you think about the opportunity we could have had if we had a really good like MBN rollout as well. Um, I remember, like, I think Google were going to do something with spam calls as well. I think they were going to introduce some kind of software. Um, I think every tech company was going to do something about it, but they all sort of bailed out for some reason. But um, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me that uh, Telstra sort of blocked uh, um, another company from giving better internet. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um, okay, now I'm going to do the weird squiggle thing. So I'm going to do... Okay, I want to get this right. So I'm going to switch on... Oh no, Streamline's already on. That's good. Um, let's go like this. Mm, maybe a little bit less of a curve there. That's good. I like that one. A bit more simple. Literal anti-competitive behavior backed by our legal system and government along with NDAs all over the place. Yeah, it's frustrating, man. I feel like... Like, and I'm not just talking about Australia in general, but I feel like the world really needs to start doing things about monopolies in tech. Um, even just things like, um, like I suppose operating systems and like, it, it's kind of weird that there's only two operating systems in the mobile market. That's a really strange thing. And, um, like, because when there's only two operating systems, there's only really going to be two successful app stores. And that's going to really affect the, I suppose, profit of smaller developers going forward. So I think there needs to be some kind of... Like, look, there just needs to be regulation in tech, basically. And good regulation from people who know what they're doing. Here I'm stuck with fixed wireless MBN. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry for you, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I will just just think it's not as bad as like the '90s, right? I remember back in the day with that ADSL stuff, and um, I always history can be good when it comes to giving you that perspective on on things. I think it's good to remember. Um, and you know what? As much as I complain about internet speeds and everything like that, um, during this lockdown, it hasn't really failed me, to be fair. Um, mind you, I did have to upgrade to, what was it? Because there's, there's three types of MBN, isn't there? There's MBN 12, MBN 50, and MBN 75 or something. And um, I was on MBN 12, and I had to upgrade um, my MBN so I could actually do these streams. And it's such bullshit because the reason it's bullshit is because if you, there is no physical difference between like MBN 12, 50 or whatever the high one is, but the company just sort of slows down your internet connection to push you up to the higher price point. So it's basically just a, it's just a really cheap, nasty way of getting people to spend more money on bandwidth. That's why. <laughs> It's just such a silly thing, um, but what can you do? Um, that's what our government agreed to for some reason. <laughs> there we go. Okay, there's the double line. Um, I'm thinking, do I want to have a double line a little bit more interesting like that? I might do that actually. Um, oh no, I won't. I'll keep it. A little bit more simple because I'll make this one a little bit more diverse and unique, a little bit more curvy. Cool. Now it's time to do this line texture thing. Okay. So let's go like that. Smaller brush size. And I'll try not to be too particular here. My OCD certainly does get the better of me when I'm sketching these things. Uh, let's go like that. I 
another thing I recommend Tom when you start like getting really into your sketching because I'm sure you will um, always like duplicate often <laughs> uh, copy your files um, you'll notice I've done it here a fair bit and then you can eventually delete the older ones but um, there's nothing more important than a backup especially when it's your creative stuff like you don't want your, your stuff just disappearing on you um, so I never used to be as diligent as I am now with that but um, you, I think with that stuff you always end up learning the hard way don't you um, I've certainly had my fair share of data losses okay Hmm. always save always save yeah yeah because it's funny a lot of these apps they save for you now but um, I still also argue uh, I actually would go one further and just duplicate the file and the reason being is because sometimes as well you might actually go down a direction with your artwork and you're like you know I really shouldn't have done that <laughs> and uh, the great thing about having a duplicate is that you can just kind of um, sort of go back in time a little bit it's perhaps not as relevant as it used to be because a lot of software has like almost infinite undos but um, I'm not sure if Photoshop has that I'm fairly certain they do but um, with Procreate there is a limit you can only undo so far so and then you uh, beyond that you then have to get out the eraser and sort of adjust things um, it becomes you'll notice it becomes more um, useful as you start developing more complex layer structures so for example you might merge two layers and then you'll lose a bit of flexibility there but um, yeah um, with if you have a duplicate you can kind of you can often recover the uh, separation in layers which is sort of I don't know if that's sort of a pro tip or maybe just a little bit of maybe a, a sort of a, an opinion more than anything what have I done here why am I not drawing on anything uh, <laughs> uh, that would be why okay I'm on the wrong layer okay okay right so the next part is to draw these kind of weird scallop things um, so I have a kind of crisscross pattern there and some straight lines and I I've created the form with these colors so I create a bit of shading there to sort of emulate sort of roundness and depth but I'll do that later on for now I shall get an idea of what size brush I'm using is that the right size a little bit thicker let's go like that perfect okay let's draw some scallops No, I think I've actually done those two. Yeah, that's right. There's a gap between the, the scallops. Okay, so I'll go like that. I'll try and make that a bit more rounder as well. Maybe a bit thicker. You can hear the concentration on me. I sweat. Do you always have a design in mind or do you just start drawing and make it up as you go? Um, good question. Um, usually I just start drawing and make it up as I go um, I find because that's sort of how I started I sort of I feel like you can get so hung up on conceptualization that often you kind of um, I don't know you sort of waste time in a sense although there are some drawings I've done where I've kind of had a clear idea of wanted to do there was one that I was really proud of I feel like when you do have a con concept and a sort of direction I feel like my artwork is better I will admit um, but there is a certain freedom that I love about just sketching um, without purpose um, so there's this one I made where and I, I've, I never really do this kind of stuff but this is actually a landscape it was actually a desktop background originally I wonder if I've got that no I don't um, I might have it in one of my previous versions if I go over here there we go so yeah, this is actually a desktop background that I found online and I thought you know I really want to try and stylize that under my kind of style and so with that I with this particular art piece I clearly had um, a sort of direction that I was going in a design a look that I was aiming for and I feel like my art works really good when I do this but I think it's the joy of just 
not knowing what the thing you're going to end up with is. I think that's it. Uh, because ultimately, like 90% of my stuff ends up just me just drawing without purpose and just seeing where it takes me. But yeah, it's a cool one that I might even try and sell that actually as like a, as a desktop background. In fact, that actually prompts me because I need to straighten my back up a little bit anyway. I should introduce some of my products. Um, so I sell smartphone wallpapers and desktop backgrounds on my website. Um, they're designed to fit the proportions of your device. Um, and yeah, some really cool designs. Uh, the smartphone wallpapers include blurred variants for better visibility of your icons. And you can find them all on mloidartist.com. Um, I also sell things like smartphone cases and my personal favorite product is actually um, my backpacks. So these things are really cool. There's actually five different panels of unique artwork, custom fit to the bag itself with three storage compartments. They're actually really uh, durable. So they're super water resistant, super tear resistant. And um, yeah, they're actually quite good. Um, I bought one for a friend and he's still using it. He seems to love it. Um, I actually had a hiking customer. A, custom, a hiking customer? That's not a thing. <laughs> I have a customer who hikes and um, basically he, uh, yeah, he took it on like some really wet like hike and it seemed to like perform really well. So um, yeah, that's the thing. But yeah, I'm thinking of releasing that uh, that weird landscape one as a sort of desktop background on my website. So yeah, because I usually sell those pretty cheap. They're usually about five or 10 bucks because they don't take a lot of money to produce. Mm. Lovely, oh God. You know, you still got me thinking, Dr. O, is it the temperature of water that defines its taste? And um, I'm just not sure. Um, I'm gonna be thinking about that all night. <laughs> um, certainly gonna be thinking about that. It is, is that actually a scientific truth or are you just, um, you just messing with me? I reckon you're messing with me. I don't trust you, I don't trust you. I reckon you're telling me all sorts of nonsense. You're filling my gullible mind up with all sorts of things. Um, let's have a look. Really cool. And thank you for everyone who's been hanging around during the stream. It's good to have such jolly conversation and um, jolly conversation about like uh, people getting scammed and fished <laughs> but um yeah it's been a pleasant stream i've enjoyed it thoroughly and um, for those people lurking in the background that's cool as well um yeah if you'll just yeah feel free to chuck me a follow and um i look forward to seeing you in future streams okay so i think i've kind of made a botch work of these scallop things here yeah, it's a bit a bit dodgy hot water tastes different to cold water doesn't it, it you know, I can't disagree with that. I feel like it does, but I'm wondering if maybe that's because the hot water kills off bacteria or something. No, that can't be right. It can't be. That's probably just some rubbish I'm making up. Um, that's my mind overthinking it. Um, but it does taste different. <laughs> God damn you, Dr. O. What, what have you done to me? <laughs> You're gonna be thinking about that all the time now. Um, okay. Let's tidy that up a little bit. And let's start adding some of the patterns in these scallops. Oh god, I'm burping. I'm burping like a like a madman. Um see I told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you've you may have won this argument, but I'll I'll come back with more um intelligence. Um uh, this argument shall see another another round as I um, try and develop a stronger case. Okay, now how did I do that previous pattern? It was one and then, okay, cool. So, oh, no, we don't draw with the eraser, we draw with the, the paint tool. Um, do I leave it like that? Yeah, that'll do. And let's make that. So I'm trying to find some uh, good video games to play at the moment. 
I, I'm afraid to say I'm in this sort of phase and I go through it often. I'll see a game that looks really cool and I'll go and buy it and um, then what happens is that I spend about one hour playing it and I'm like, yeah, this is boring. <laughs> and I just sort of stop playing it. Um, and I've done it with some really like good games, games I know are good. Like I did it with The Witcher, The Witcher 3, a really awesome game. And for some reason, I can't get past like the third hour before I just get so utterly bored that um, I have to switch off. Um, yeah, you're in the same boat, Dr. O. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, um, I recently downloaded a game, and it, you know, it's actually a functioning game. It works well. It's called um, Axiom Verge, and it's sort of this game which is like a, it's pretty much a ripoff of Metroid, but mind you that it is made by one guy. So I think when, I think you can sort of give some leeway there when someone, when one person has made a game, that's a pretty impressive feat. And I've played a good, like maybe two hours into it, and yeah, I just couldn't get, I couldn't sort of go for further with it. I just got really bored with it. So I've now started playing um, a game I've already played like hundreds of times. Um, I'm playing Far Cry 4 at the moment, which is that one sort of set in sort of Tibetan mountains and stuff. Um, it's actually, it's supposed to be a really um, intense game where you're sort of like stealthily hiding from all these guys with guns and um, doing like little, uh, little takedowns and stuff. But it's also the most stupidly relaxing game because it's sort of set in like a place inspired by Tibet and you've got all this lovely music like with um, all like those like Mongolian sort of, um, I'm not sure if it's Mongolian, but they sort of got that sort of throat singing in there, which is really cool. Um, I'm into that stuff, which is weird because um, I'm not one of those spiritual people who like believes in astrology or anything, but for some reason I'm really into... Um, the music they're into. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Far Cry 6. I'm really, really hoping this isn't shit. I, I'm so hoping it's a good game because I got to say I really didn't like Far Cry 5 and especially didn't like, um, what was their, that dumb spin-off game they had which was set in sort of like the same place but it was like an ap apocalyptic version. Uh, it was like something like new dawn or something or is that twilight i don't know i could, <laughs> I could be wrong um oh yeah five is bad man it's you know what it's i'm starting to think maybe you should play it because other people seem to really dig it for some reason they like they really like it but it's just really cringy um it's set in america and um there's a lot of controversy when it came out because i think trump had just won the election and um, yeah, people thought it was like an attack on right wing sort of America, but um, I don't think it was it because it would, games are usually made a long way before the events that are happening when they're launched. Because games usually have that you know like four year um, development cycle. But um, it's just a really annoying game. Like um, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. Um, it just doesn't feel like a suitable environment for a Fire Cry game. That's one problem. And also, like, they often interrupt your gameplay with this weird sort of thing where they keep sort of pulling you out of the actual thing you're doing so that they can put you into the main storyline, which is really bad. It's just not interesting, not engaging at all. But everything I say here is subject to opinion, of course. And some people, for some reason, really love it and... Um, yeah, I don't know. It's also another thing I don't like about it. Um, I'm just going to do a massive rant about Far Cry 5. Um, it really is the exact same game as Far Cry 4. Just pretty much reskinned and retextured. Um, that's what it feels like. And they've out, they've maybe added a few new music and stuff like that. But um, it really just feels like a bit of a cop out, really. <laughs> um, so there you go. There's my rants on Far Cry 5. Um, but I don't know. It, it's kind of weird because saying that, I have played it twice. And um, 
it does have a similar kind of feeling to Far Cry 4, because let, let's be honest, it's the same game, in the sense that it can be really relaxing. <laughs> Just a really chill game at times. Um, so if you're looking for a nice game to chill out to during lockdown, um, it's, not a, it's not a bad game maybe for that. But uh, it will frustrate you with some of its dumb decisions in design. If you're anything like me, that is. Okay, let's... I didn't like how tight I had those lines. I want to smooth those out. Not smooth, but open them up a little bit. Because it didn't quite match what I was doing on the other side of the artwork. It's actually funny, I usually do these uh, doodles, these patterns, all... Like, I'll do the outline all at once. But um, I sort of decided halfway through the last stream that I kind of wanted to extend it out. Um, it was inspired by another artwork, and it was a pretty basic artwork, really. It was sort of like, that's the canvas. It was sort of these hills, like that, and it looked kind of cool. And um, seeing that, it made me think, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I did this sort of stratum design that in adherence to some of those things. That'd be really cool. So taking inspiration from that, I decided to add this in. And um, yeah, I might add some of the color in if I get time. I probably won't do another stream with this artwork. I'll probably do something new for the next artwork. But, um, for, sorry, for the next stream. But um, yeah, I think this is coming along pretty well now. Okay, I think it's time to color it in. And as we're up to about two hours I think yeah we're probably coming close to the end of my stream anyway I don't usually go too long but um thank you for everyone who's been hanging around and it's been a good little chat a good little yarn and um I've certainly enjoyed myself so for what it's worth uh yeah that's that's definitely the case so let's go to some malaise here I might switch off alpha lock for some of them just so I got a bit more control I can always switch them on later and let's bring that background in. Oh, that's not how we do it. Okay. So what I shall do, and once again, because I'm merging layers, and this is that was a that layer took me a while to make. I'm going to duplicate again. And there we go. I'll merge my outline together and I'll make that the reference layer. So with the reference layer, what I can do. I can actually now use color drop so I can go to a completely different layer and I can use color drop by just dropping in there and if I didn't do the reference layer it would have just spilled all over the page like I did like it sort of did before but because it's using the outline as a reference it knows where to restrict the um, color drop so now I'm just gonna fill in the rest of this little background God, I did a bit of a voice grind there I should Take a drink. Mm. Such delicious, delicious temperature. Um, okay, let's call that one in. And now I'm going to go to... What other colours do I have in this layer? I have this sort of weird blue colour. So I'll go like that. And I shall switch on the outline again. Drag that in. And this color, I remember, goes darker when it goes more to the outer edge. So if I go like that, this is where I'm going to switch on alpha lock again. Just with two fingers, wipe into the side. And I might go to a thicker brush here just for um, quickness. Quickness? For speed. <laughs> it's that time of night. This, my language has disappeared. Um, but um, at least you've added a new word to your vocabulary, um, the quickness. Adding the quickness. Actually, that's not a new word. That's, a, that's an actual word. We've now learned you can use it in a whole new context. Okay, cool. That looks good. Uh, this also is a gradient, which does... There we go. Cool. And so I shall go and paint this in as well. I shall go to about there. And I shall blend that in as well. It's actually funny, I'm um, colouring in the second time. 
is always a lot quicker than the first because the first time you're so particular about well I am anyway I'm so particular about where I put these colors but now that I've already made those decisions it's just a process so now I'm going to deselect that color and in my base color layer one ooh, burping again I'm going to color drop this lovely yellow into whatever the hell this is I like to think of it as a sort of slimy flame, but um, who knows? Okay. I shall get a little bit of orange and I'll switch on alpha lock there as well. So I'm going to just, I don't want to go too much um, with the orange. Just a little bit to add a bit of um, variance and a bit of depth, just like so. And then I'm going to get that nice blue color. So I'm basically just copying my colors across to this new pattern. Ooh, no, that didn't work. That's because I've got alpha lock on, so I shall switch that off. And these little worm things have a bit more depth to them. So that depth actually occurs in another layer. Okay, cool. There's something very therapeutic about coloring in. I do enjoy it. Um, I actually realized I've made a mistake with my, um, with my coloring in, in the sense that, not, not my coloring in, sorry, my outline. I haven't filled in the little triangle at the bottom here, so I'm just going to quickly do that now. I don't think anyone would have noticed, but <laughs> it would have drove me up the wall. Okay, let's just quickly do these two as well. Cool, awesome. So returning to um, base color layer one, I shall quickly just fill that back in. Yep, cool. Let's get those little triangles in. Nice, cool. And then I have to fill in these little circles. So I'm gonna get the red in first just drag that in. And then we're going to get that nice blue tone again. I find I always tend to put the blue and the reds next to each other. So the big question for me with this art piece, and um, if you have any opinions, you're welcome to share it. I actually don't know what color I want this section. That's probably the last thing I'm sort of struggling over. I had a yellow color but that I was experimenting with in the last stream that I kind of liked and I was sort of leaning towards, but I'm not entirely sold. I'm not really sure about that yet. So I might, even if I do it off stream, I might actually um, experiment with different colors. Like I might try blue, but I feel like it needs to be one of these sort of more primary, like yellow, blue, and red colors for it to kind of work. If you mix it with the sort of the sort of more subtle uh, desaturated tones, for some reason it doesn't seem to look as good. So I'll probably avoid that. But I think yellow is kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment. I might create a bit more of a sort of nice gradient to make it look a bit more interesting. Okay, so making progress with our color. I'll probably end up running a little bit over time because I'm kind of, <laughs> I always end up doing this, I always end up running. I always end up going over time because I just end up enjoying it too much, which is a good thing, it's a good thing. Um, okay, let's go to base color layer three. Let's get that yellow into the blocks. And 
we'll just keep doing that. And with my outline, I should actually just quickly create a little line that divides. I'm sort of calling this sand and that water, which is kind of weird. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to just quickly tidy up that like so. And now it's time to add that blue in. I do like the fact that actually, I, I, it was sort of unintentional, but I do like, <laughs> it looks like cheese. It does actually look like cheese. Um, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, in fact, it actually looks more like cheese than it does like sand. <laughs> it's a cool emoji, by the way. I do like, <laughs> um, it's pretty neat. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for joining us again, Tom. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you um, join me in this stream. Hope, hopefully I'll see you in, uh, in more. Um, it's been a good chat. Yeah, so where am I up to? So I'm filling in the, the water. <laughs> and that's right, I've also got the blue and yellow in this zigzag thing as well. So the blue is in. Ah, oh, this is tricky, yeah, it's alternating. So it's yellow, blue. No, it's not, it's not tricky. Yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Yeah, cool. It's just uh, alternating colors there. So we'll go, I think I've added one too many. No, no, this will work. Okay. Then we'll go like that. Then it's uh, blue. I often lose track here, so I'm trying to be pretty careful. <laughs> just to save time. Uh, cool. And is that right? Yeah, no, you got this, cool. Then I go yellow. Try my best to stay consistent with what I was doing before. But it's kind of funny, like um, you build these sort of patterns just on the fly and then you gotta try and remember what you did. That's one of the disadvantage. There's disadvantages of sort of just drawing on the fly, I think, is that you sort of you kind of lose track of what you were doing. Um, okay. Let's do that with a bit of blue. And yeah, I think I'll polish this off, a lot of these lines off later on uh, when I'm off air. Off air? Is that a, that's probably not correct terminology for Twitch. But um, I like it. It sounds cool. Um, let's go like that. I'll use my color drop feature again. And cool, awesome. And now I have to do these, the scallops. So for this one, rather than color dropping, I'm just gonna paint through it because it's gonna be quicker to do it that way. And then for this one, I shall grab that color there. And just once again, I'm not gonna color drop it, just gonna draw behind the, that outline because otherwise I have to keep doing that uh, color drop feature. And there's probably a quicker way of doing color drop, but I'm too lazy to figure it out. So let's simply color that in. Oh, I'm running out of water again. Will this water last me? Till the end of the stream, let's see. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sort of uh, finish it at 11, but I've got one minute left, so I'm, I'll, I'll definitely be running over time. But um, yeah, um, I'm nonetheless actually enjoying it anyway. So <laughs> and luckily, I'm not working tomorrow, so I can kind of, I've got that flexibility. Let's go to secondary color three. Um, I might just move some of these layers that I'm not using. Okay, and I'll bring back the color. Cool. So these have a little bit more depth to them, don't they? So with the blocks, I shall add that in. And I shall smudge it in as well. The 
cheese blocks. <laughs> now I can't see them as anything other than cheese. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Um, <laughs> okay, let's go with that. And I'll just sort of, I might just do it roughly for now and I can always tidy up later. But I am enjoying this one, so I might, I'm actually thinking of making this a um, desktop background for my Patreon viewers. So, uh, Patreon viewers, Patreon subscribers. So, yeah, um, with Patreon, uh, basically, yeah, um, it's an interesting little thing. So, oh, Dr. O said, uh, cheese first. Oh, actually, yeah, it was Dr. O. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. I'm losing my mind. Yeah, with Patreon, I have two tiers um, at relatively affordable prices. And um, yeah, basically, uh, for the supporter tier, you get three original desktop wallpapers. For the uh, gold member tier, you actually get a free wallpaper every month. Um, and so that's, I think, $10 Australian, $7.50 in the USD, which is pretty cool. Um, you get 25% off my live stream collections. That's uh, products made during the these live streams. Um, and yeah, of course, every Patreon donation goes towards supporting the channel. Really cool. At this stage, I'm happy for follows. And remember, this stuff is always free by design. So you don't feel obligated to do that. But um, yeah, it's a thing. Um, I shall continue coloring in. So let's go to... I've added depth there. Now I need to add a little bit of depth to this sort of wiggly thing. Okay, let's go with that. Awesome. Don't blame me for your cheesy thoughts. <laughs> oh, an excellent, excellent pun there. Is that a pun? I think I'm going to call it a pun. I think it's a good pun. Um, probably isn't a pun. Probably doesn't um, get that. Um, Classification. Now, what have I done here? This is interesting. Um, somehow I seem to have incorporated a bit of black into this secondary layer. I don't really know how that's happened, but um, there you go. It's the darkness in me, it's coming out. It's, um... <laughs> it's the evil side of me, it's uh, trying to break through into the artwork. Um, okay, let's grab. So I've added a bit of, that's right, I've added the depth to this thing. Let's blend that in with the smudge tool. This is where alpha lock comes in handy. And I think you can do that on, um, uh, yeah, on Photoshop as well. So um, a cool little trick there. If you use alpha lock, um, blending in is actually easier. Um, if I didn't use alpha lock, I'd actually be blending white back into some of these um, shapes. So it actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I feel like the concept of a pun became more vague and ambiguous over the years. Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass, I don't know. But um, <laughs> it's good to know it's not just me um, who feels that way. Okay, now I've got to add the a bit of depth to these scallops. I think we're coming close to finishing the color, which is pretty cool. Um, I thought that would actually take a bit longer than I originally anticipated, but um, it seems to be coming together. And now I, I remember this is a problem I had with the last stream. Um, I actually have to manually set the exposure so that people can actually see what colors I'm putting in here. Um, would make sense with the amount of slang we have now. That is probably it, isn't it? Yeah, because especially I think with tech now, there's so much slang. Yeah, that's probably the reason why we struggle so much um, identifying puns. <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe. Yeah, you could be right. Um, let's go like that. Yeah, this it's kind of funny. These two particular colors don't come up very well on the camera. I have to really darken the exposure to allow you to see it. So um, darken the exposure, that's not the right terminology either. Um, I have to lower the exposure to let you see that. Um, cool.
Did I have that on the right bit? I think I do. No, I have it on the wrong bit. Okay. <laughs> so what I've done here is I've um, got the shading on the wrong parts of the of the shape. So I want the shading at the bottom as opposed to the top. It's a small thing, but um, that would make a big difference actually. In my mind at least. Yep, I am doing that in the right way. Oh, very good. I'm impressing myself now with the fact that I'm actually using layers correctly. Um, in my last stream, I was all over the place. I was putting just all my colors in all the wrong layers, and I was driving myself um, to infuriation. But I seem to be getting better at that. A little bit more switched on tonight, maybe. Okay. Let's blur these in as well. And I might just make that alpha lock to make blurring easier. Oh, have I got that in the wrong layer again? I think I do. <laughs> After all that, I think I've actually put that in the... Oh, what have I done here? Okay, let's see if I can find it. So I have actually got that in the right layer. Maybe I was smudging in the wrong one. Okay, that's what was going on. Um, it's funny, I was just going on about how diligent I've been with putting things in the right layer, and then I just uh, <laughs> completely nooped. Um, great, okay. Let's, I might lower my brush size a little bit there to get, give me just a bit more precision. Um, cool. There is something really therapeutic and really relaxing about smudging and blending colors in. I don't know what it is, but every single time it's just one of the best feelings. So um, yeah, when you get your new pen display, Tom, uh, that's something I guarantee you will start enjoying. Um, let's see where I'm up to. So I'm gonna open up all my layers. I think I've only got one color left, look at that. Oh no, two more colors. To quickly shade that in and I think that one is in yep this one here okay that's a secondary color layer let's put that in we'll quickly smudge that that won't take too long and then I think we'll probably call it a night I reckon um, I'll hopefully arrive tomorrow <laughs> um, oh cool if Ozpho stops, oh yeah, absolutely, the pen display. Um, yeah, you know what? Um, be patient with the delivery services. Um, I've, it's actually funny, I bought a new tripod for my um, uh, camera here, and um, sadly, that's been delayed another week or so. Um, and I, it makes a lot of sense. Like I think when you're, during COVID, because they also have those um, people density limits, so um, I imagine there's a lot less people to actually process orders and things like that. And I can't imagine it being very different for OzPost. So I have a bit of empathy for that. Um, yeah, the delays are gonna happen at the moment annoyingly, but um, what can you do? I think everyone's kind of in the same boat. Yeah, the damn thing. Yeah, exact same situation with mine. Like um, it was, in fact, it actually wasn't two days it was actually um a week <laughs> it took a whole week for the order just to get processed and um yeah like i have experience working in retail and um i can completely understand why that would happen so yeah they'll, they'll see no angry emails from me I, I can assure you of that um but what i shall do because i've sort of just finished coloring in the um outline layer there i've this thing's annoying me that's really annoying me i've got a I've got a rogue um, blotch and it's annoying me. So let's get rid of it. Which layer is it in? Is it this one? No. Is it that one? No. Oh, there it is. Base color layer one. Let's get rid of it. Get out of here. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing worse than a rogue pixel, I'm telling you. Or a rogue splotch. Um, let's add one more layer. And this here is going to be my background layer. 
Um, I always try to at least get an open inquiry if something is that late. Yeah, I, I'm kind of the same as well usually. Um, usually I'll, if something's that late, I'll generally open up an inquiry. But at this point, I think I'm just, <laughs> I think when it comes to lockdown, I'm just, I'm very, I don't know, I'm a lot more laid back. And um, I don't know, maybe that's being a little bit too complacent. Um, I think each to their own, depends on the situation. I think as well, if you're spending like $500 on something, there should probably be a little bit more because mine was only like $50, $50 like in total amount. So I think if you're spending like $600, you should be a little bit more, um, yeah, I suppose, um, diligent in sort of following it up, I suppose. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so this is my, the, I'm gonna fill this negative space up quite simply. And the way I'm doing that is just with a really simple uh, just a smudge. I'm actually borrowing colors from the actual art piece itself, so I don't want to add any new colors. I want to try and keep that color palette I got from, um, yeah, like, um, yeah, the, that's definitely the truth, Tom. Like, um, yeah, <laughs> D shipping delays, I think it's just a problem I think everyone's having at the moment. Mm. God, this water is good. Oh, really? I didn't. That's interesting. I didn't know there was like a post insurance you could get with Australian Post. I knew that thing existed in America. I didn't know Australia had it. That's good to know. You've actually taught me something new, my friend. Um, now, that's pretty much the artwork done. I'm going to do one final thing to finish it all off. And um, then I shall be good. So I'll just go with my logo. That's the most important part, my logo, signing it off. Um, Let's get that in there. And now this is the hard part actually, trying to decide where my logo should actually go. Where does the logo go? Uh, that's an interesting sentence. Um, so I usually like to keep it small. So if it's a large art piece, you want it to be a little bit smaller. I'm thinking of having it somewhere there. But what I usually do with my logos is I duplicate it. Oh no, I've run out of layers. Okay, so before I do anything, I'm going to do one last duplication because <laughs> in order to add this extra layer, I'm going to have to make some room. So I'm going to merge some of these layers together. Um, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? This is pretty risky. I'm going to merge all of those color layers together. This is kind of cool. So now you can just see the entire color layer without anything else. Uh, looks even cooler when you put that in there. So now I've got this Emloid logo. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to change the color of, um, actually the lightness, I should say, of the top layer there. And I'm gonna just put it up a little bit. And that gives me this really cool, oh, there, I didn't wanna do that. It gives me this cool drop um, shadow effect that I kinda like doing. Now as I merge those layers, I can go to overlay, like so. And it sort of blends it really nicely with the rest of the artwork. So it's not too um, not too distracting from the actual thing. It's sweet enough to be able to get it via post, but for it to be insured is another thing entirely. It's a cool feature. Um, it's good to know that they actually do that in Australia. I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. You've literally taught me something new, man. Uh, what should I do? Should I put this over here or should I? No, you know what? I liked where it was. I'm going to put it. Oh, I could do it there, actually. That looks kind of cool. Um, I could I could also turn it and rotate it like so. Now you know what, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple, put it right in the middle. I can always change my mind later. But that's it, that's my piece. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I actually really like this, I think it's looking kinda cool. That might become my new desktop background. <laughs> I might even sell it on my website actually because I'm really liking it. If I don't put it on my website, I'll put it on Patreon and um, yeah, one of the two because it's I think it's too good to just keep in pay in my um, Procreate app, uh, just gathering dust. I'm quite proud of this one and how it's turned out. Um, yeah, that concludes my thing. Thank you, Tom. That's very kind. I'm glad you like it and I hope to see you again in future streams, man. So um, yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And for all those people lurking, 